Have you ever sat down and really thought about how your food gets to your dinner table? If you see this Foodland Ontario logo on the produce at your local grocer, there's a good chance that it came from a place called Norfolk County, a small but hugely important agricultural region located two hours southwest of Toronto. It used to be Canada's tobacco growing capital, but after the collapse of the tobacco industry, Norfolk pivoted to become Ontario's garden and is now the province's top grower of asparagus, apples, pumpkins, cabbage, and other grocery store staples. And working alongside Norfolk County's industrious farmers are another group of people that are mostly invisible to the Canadian grocery shopper, the migrant farm worker. Every year, 20,000 farm workers come to Ontario to work on farms under Canada's Seasonal Agricultural Work Program. Partnering countries include Mexico and 11 Caribbean countries. This program was started in 1966 as a temporary solution to address a Canadian farm labor shortage, but it has become a permanent work rotation that Canada's food supply relies on. These workers are critical to our economy. So a group of local volunteers and businesses come together each year to celebrate the workers' contributions with the annual Farms of Norfolk Football Association Tournament, a day-long farm versus farm soccer tournament. But before anyone in town even starts thinking about tournament day, the workers' journey begins at the Migrant Health Fair, which is held every year by volunteers from across Norfolk County to get workers ready for a long harvest season. So first, I want to thank you for all the hard work that you do on the farms to provide us with this awesome food. Primeramente le quiero dar gracias por el trabajo que hace uh, para conseguir la comida fresca para nosotros. Muchas gracias. At this health fair, the workers learn proper lifting techniques, first aid and emergency training, get public health orientation, fire safety training, and even cooking today. classes. So the cross class are wonderful because you cook once and then you have food for several days. It's also a way for returning workers to meet up with new friends they've made while working on the farms. Local sponsors also donate raffle prizes. Appliances that seem everyday to Ontarians, like the slow cooker, are a big deal to these workers. For them, it's a huge quality of life improvement while they live in their seasonal farm work housing. Shortly before the work season begins, the workers head to the local grocery store to stock up on essentials. After all, a very busy work season is on the horizon. To discuss the migrant farm workers' contributions to the local economy and the upcoming football tournament, I met with Kerry Sinkowski, founder of the Farms of Norfolk Football Association, and Crystal Chop, the mayor of Norfolk County. So could you tell me a little bit about how you see migrant workers contributing to our communities and our local economies? Norfolk County couldn't survive without our migrant workers. I mean, we have, I believe it's around 9,000 migrant workers right now here. That's more than Port Dover and 2,000 less than Simcoe. So it's an entire community that's spread across the county. And I think what's really unique about Norfolk is that you don't see this everywhere else. The migrant worker population, because of our farms and the rest of Canada, most of it's with heavy machinery. And so they don't have that same population that because of our soil and our climate here that is so unique in the, the fruits and vegetables that we're able to grow and, and we rely on them in the way that we do. I'm kind of curious, I guess, to hear your perspective. What changes you've seen over the last decade uh, here in Norfolk County? What I've really noticed is one, that grocery stores are carrying products that are specific to the cuisine of like Jamaica and Mexico, and that there's a lot more variety. But through the soccer tournament, what I've noticed is that all the support we've had for it, whether it's been donations of money or, or in-kind donations, those have all been unsolicited. Those are people who've called me and said, I have 10 cases of Gatorade and I want to give them to the tournament. We're just getting positive feedback all the time and it's actually really overwhelming. It's pretty amazing and I think we just hit a right time when we are at the point where there's a lot of folks who realize we need to be better at being more welcoming and integrated. A busy harvest season is nearly finished, and it's game day. 
It's a very hot August day, and Carrie is at the soccer fields first thing in the morning. The thing we could do is put those bags and the tickets inside each bag. Like Katie's team has their jerseys already. Okay. Someone just showed up. Carrie meets up with each farm team as they arrive by bus and gets the jerseys in the hands of each hola, player. Hola. Uh, practice balls. And then these are for you guys. They're just bags. And those are your jerseys. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Hi. Right. Yeah, I'm Carrie. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Hey, who do I make it out to? Uh, Farms in Norfolk Football Association. Oh, no, I, I lost my Jamaican flag, so they're yelling at me right oh, now. Really? <laughs> we had it this morning, and now we can't find it. No. <laughs> Carrie found a Jamaican flag. Everything was just fine. The FNFA tournament represents a rare and much welcomed opportunity for the migrant farm workers to take a moment of respite from the farm work. Each participating farm pays an entry fee. And Carrie goes through the painstaking task of organizing every aspect of the tournament, from jersey prints to sponsor outreach to food planning. Oh, I can give you more of these if you want to. They're uh, totes. Last year we did keychains, okay. but we decided to do this this year. So they're soccer ball bags. Yeah, yeah that's sweet. This year's tournament is larger than last year's, with seven teams participating across three separate playing fields. Yeah. This is more than FIFA. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming out today. It's a beautiful day. The sun is shining. The birds are chirping. Everybody is coming out. Today we have 17. And we have the defending champion, FC Lusso. <laughs> and then we have Scotland. We have Bello Fest. We have Easy Grow. We have Waterford Sand and Gravel. And then we have Fox Hollow. So this is how this tournament is going to go. We're going to play seven rounds on three fields concurrently. Let's play, everybody. Let's have some fun. And with the blow of the whistle, the first round of games is underway. And let me tell you, these guys play soccer with the same intensity that they work on the farms. They don't mess around. Team works out their strategy between games. It doesn't take long for tensions to start flaring. Everyone is serious about winning. Eustace, an FNFA volunteer, tallies up the scores. We're going to win. Gonna win. Yeah, we're going to win. What did you see? Get the print. Skylar. Fox Hollow is a local tree farm. They've advanced to the semifinals. The farm's owner, Paul Rapai, couldn't pull away enough workers due to their farm's busy season, so he put together a mixed team consisting of players from Fox Hollow and two neighboring farms. 
As the only trilingual team in this year's tournament, he has to cross-translate between North American English, Spanish, and Caribbean English. Paul works out the game plan with his team. Okay. Let him play for five minutes. It's yeah. fair. Yeah. It's important. Yeah. Everybody plays. As the day progresses, more and more Norfolk County locals come by to get a glimpse of the action. Some farm workers even came out from the Gulf area to spectate. It's the semifinals, and the tournament becomes a big party. Finals pit Skylar Farms versus Lusos FC, and every time I looked at the crowd, more and more spectators are putting on Skylar Farms red shirts. I had no idea where these extra shirts were coming from. It's a very intense championship match. The game is tied, and neither Lusos FC or Skylar Farms want to give an inch of ground, so the championship comes down to a shootout. After a long tournament, Lusos FC defends their championship and becomes the back-to-back -back FNFA 2019 champions. Despite their loss, Skylar Farms players and fans are all smiles and optimistic about returning next year. We'll be back for next year. We'll be back for next year. And we'll be our defense sports team. Much better. One, two, three. And what would a Caribbean party be like without some delicious Palau rice served out the back of a vehicle? Despite the long tournament and exhaustion from the harvest season, the farm workers are some of the most warm and welcoming people I've ever met. It's not even about the actual prize, which is just a plastic trophy. For them, it's about the competition and representing their farms the best way they can. It's back to the farms to finish the harvest season. So the next time you buy a basket of cherries at the grocery store or a bag of those perfectly picked apples, remember all these men and women who spend a lot of time away from their families to work exhausting seven-day work weeks on the farms to put your food on your table. These are Ontario's farm workers, and they keep us fed. <laughs>